Well, if you ever want to know how to check your click style torque wrench, and you know, I suspected this torque wrench from day one, to tell you the truth. It's, uh, what is this? Ampro. Now, I noticed a couple different ways you're supposed to say they're supposed to store them. Um, either all the tension off or mostly the tension off, maybe just a tiny bit of tension, but either way, that should be both be good. Um, you don't want to leave it stored with the tension on the spring, I know about that. Um, but I always suspected this wrench, and because when you uh, actually marked it here, you can see this black mark, this is a zero mark, and that's a zero mark too. And when I turned it up on here, it never really, the zero mark never really lined up with the line for the inch pounds. And that's one thing that always had me suspicious about it. It seemed like it was too hard. And yeah, it was definitely, and as I started using, I started to going back to my old 40 year old inch pound beam style, which is a good one actually. This is a, this is a craftsman or something. Um, but uh, the deal with this one, you know, it always works fine. There's no problem with it. Actually, yeah, it is uh, something good, whatever the hell it is. But, uh, you know, you got the adjustable pointer on it. The beam style always works accurately. So I says, let me, I got to figure out a way to check this thing out. So what I did is I had this crate. Actually, this is what the gun safe came on. Um, and I also had, I was keeping this part around, this is a, um, you can see it spins in here nice and easy. This is an actual idler pulley off the Chrysler Sebring, it's the old one, but it spins nice and easy. There's no resistance in it, it's just a bearing, right? And what I got going through it is a bolt on both sides. You can see it right here, there's the other side of the bolt. So they put 916's bolt on each side. And you just check one against the other. You can read one against the other. And say, for instance, I have it on 240 inch pounds, which is 20 foot pounds on this one. It should click on 240 inch pounds on this one. Well, it wasn't. Actually, when this is set around 120 inch pounds, it's about, it's over 200 inch pounds on this one. That's what I found out. And you know, this is not a bad deal to have around because I'm going to keep this thing in the shed, actually, because uh, it turned out, you know, all I had to do was uh, jam the uh, pulley uh, bearing in here with some washers on it. And it's a bearing, so, I mean, it spins nice and free. Like, maybe there's an inch pound of resistance on it or something. Plenty good enough for checking this. It's jammed up in here in the wood. There's a screw up against there, piece of wood up against here. So it's, it's in there nice and tight. I mean, I'm not going to be able to check like 50 foot-pounds with it. But I, I probably could, though, if I, um, you know, I jam some more wood in there or something. Or um, put a metal bracket up around here to keep it from moving. But it's plenty good enough for checking these inch-pound wrenches. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll probably... I might take this apart and recalibrate it myself because it's not worth recalibrating, to tell you the truth. But the other thing is I could do is... Just put a mental uh, a note on here that 240 inch pounds on this is I don't know whatever it comes out to be or 120 inch pounds on this is actually 240 inch pounds and I'll show you what what I'm doing here. Okay, so you can see the two wrenches. I got it on 120 foot pounds on the bottom one. Now listen for the click. See that? It's about 240. It's about 240. It's about 240. So that thing is way the hell off. Um, I think I could actually uh, unscrew this, probably adjust it myself, or I could just take a couple readings of you know what it's what it's uh, really the real accuracy is. And now this one I trust because uh, I think this is uh, what the hell is this thing again, man? Stupid. 
Stur Sturvant Company Quality, I don't know, Illinois. This is something made in the USA a while ago. It's, some, it's not shitty. It's high quality. So, uh, yeah, I can, uh, and you can see this is, uh, I got it on zero. So, uh, maybe it's just off of maybe a couple foot pounds or something, a couple inch pounds, but it's definitely showing that this thing is actually, when you put it on 120 inch pounds, this low one, this little one right here, it's actually about 240. So let's take another reading and see if I put it on some other reading and see what it says. Okay, so I put the, uh, and you know, I'm reading it right. It's like, uh, it's got like a line. Because if actually I was torquing it up even higher, like just a line goes like, goes like this. And then down, and then the words are up here. If I went even further, it would even be further off. Um... In other words, it's like I'm using that line where it goes down like this, and when you got to line it up, I don't know if you could, I don't know if I could show it on the camera if it's going to pick it up because it's like I could barely see with a magnifying glass. It's another thing about this wrench, but now I got it on 360 inch pounds. I mean, excuse me, I got it on 240 inch pounds, and it's showing about 360 on this. Watch. That was it. So, if you put this on 120, it's 240. You put it on 240, it's about 360. I guess if you put it on 360 inch pounds, it's about 480. It's about 120 off. Just remember that. I mean, I'm not gonna only I'm only use this thing in tight quarters, but I'll keep it. I could probably readjust it though myself. But being off exactly off 120. Or roughly 120 or t uh, 10 foot pounds off that's not too bad it's not too bad actually if you're talking about you know a, um, you know if you have a uh, torque wrench that goes from like 50 foot pounds to uh, 300 foot pounds and you're off 10 foot pounds but off 10 foot pounds for an inch foot pounds wrench is really bad it's really bad I didn't trust this thing from day one and you know but you know this is still I think this is good to have for it's not hard to make this thing and like I said I can actually make this wheel a lot stronger too I mean I could put a if I wanted to like really check a really strong bolt I could put like uh, angle iron in here and across here and then instead of using a grade 5 automotive bolt in here I could put a grade eight. Then I, you know, I could check something like 200 foot pounds, maybe or something. That wouldn't even be a problem. But I'm going to keep this thing around. I'm going to keep it in the shed on the side, just standing up, and keep it out of the water because uh, this is good. Even if I want to check a beam style to another beam style, but the beam styles don't freaking screw up, man. Just that here's your problem, though. Here's your beam style, right? Here's your click style. You see the problem? Like if you're trying to get into a tight area. And the other thing is you gotta keep putting this on. This is where like a 12 point socket would come in handy too, because if you have a beam style and you're in a tight area, you might want to you can just move it off like a twelfth of a turn and put the socket back on and go like that, right? This well, if you got a six-point socket, socket, you'll have to go like a sixth of a turn to put the socket back on when you say you're hitting up, you know, something in the car, you're hitting the engine or something with the handle. Now, this one, it's a ratchet. You know, it's a ratchet, so. Just like a ratchet. Just like a ratchet on the top. But that's, um, that's telling me, well... I guess I can use it though. I just got to remember it's um, 120 is actually 240. 
240 is 360, and I assume 360 is, um, I think, like, uh, when you adjust it, it's like you got to loosen or tighten a spring up. I guess if it's, um, actually, the spring is too tight, which also, that tells me this thing was screwed up. I thought it was screwed up from day one because you would think it would be reading low after a period of time, not high. Like, in other words, if you kept tension on a spring, it should be, and you wear down it, and that spring kind of compresses after a while. Then when you put, you know, you tighten this down, this neural thing down, and it, you put it on, say, 240 inch-pounds, well, say the spring was already compressed from sitting a while, it, it should read, you would think it's going to be torquing less. In this case, it's torquing more. That's telling me this thing was off from day one, even though it's got this cute sticker on here and all this other stuff. And I've always kept it stored properly. I never even, this thing was always inside my house, too, in a, in a cabinet inside this case. It's never been abused. It's never been in my toolbox laying around or banging around. It was inexpensive. But I guess it's still worth it now because now I know where to keep the torque at. And considering the spring is like, however it works in here, it's linear. In other words, if it's off at 120 inch pounds at 240, if it's off 120 inch pounds at 360, it's going to be off 120 inch pounds all the way up. So I could still use it. I just got. I'm going to put a tag on here that um, that um, uh, 120 inch pounds is 240. Add 120 inch pounds to the reading on this handle. I've also uh, marked it in black here and on here for these zeros because these thing is really damn hard to read. I don't like it, but I did. It was only like twenty something bucks, but then again, you know, now that I can freaking use it, and I can always check it. Actually, now that I think I know what the problem, I think that problem's been wrong all along, but now I know what the problem is, considering I store it right. And you know, maybe I will take it apart, but I don't want to freaking screw around with it. To tell you the truth, as long as I can make it work, I'll just put a tag on here. I'll put some uh, tape. Uh, with writing 120 inch pounds on this is actually is actually 240 add 120 inch pounds I'll just wrap it around here